Hey everyone, this is Dylan from Digital Native, and today we're going to be tackling the big kahuna of color space today, Asus. Asus has actually been around for over a decade now, and they've used it on plenty of productions, and it's only becoming more and more adapted into the industry. But the best thing about Asus is that it supplies a unified color space across the course of a production's lifetime. I mean, this shit was developed by hundreds of industry-leading scientists and engineers, you know. I mean, you'd have to have a PhD to really understand the ins and outs of what Asus is, but all you really need to know is it's badass, and we're gonna look into it today, so. Now there is an experimental version of Octane Render 2020 that is out there that you can try out today. It's actually been available since November. And it does have Asus support. It actually has a lot of cool, interesting features coming to it. Cool things like a uh, new light model, a new hair system, a bunch of new procedural noises. And uh, one simple thing that we haven't had for a while is um, Within Octane, we haven't been able to use any of the built-in Cinema 4D noises. So with this new update, we'll be able to use those as well. So lots of cool features coming to Octane 2020 soon. I personally am not using Octane 2020. Um, they say you should only you shouldn't use it for production, just for experiments. And personally, I'm just gonna wait until the full release comes out but uh we're just going to use the current version of octane and we're going to see what we can get out of asus here so i'm going to be using after effects for the composite um there are other programs like resolve and nuke that can use asus um i'm just more comfortable in after effects so that's what we're going to be using so got my scene set up here i just have this mask now if we want to prep this for asus there are a few things we want to do going to go into the camera imager and make sure you enable that you don't have to do this but I like to bump up this highlight compression if there's anything blowing out in the response we want to change that to linear and then it's going to darken our image so we can bump up our gammas to 2.2 and we'll get back to what we were seeing before we also want to tick neutral response and that should be it for the camera tag if we jump over into the settings now um, under the main section in the octane render you're going to want to change this render buffer type to float linear and then hopping over to the render passes i'm going to enable that and just go ahead and check these settings exr32 rle all those are checked and we want to be in linear here and I'm just going to do a simple composite for this image. So all I really need is the diffuse direct, indirect, reflection direct, and indirect. And we can see those are working. Cool. And that should be it as long as we are linearizing our outputs we should be in a good spot to do some asus compositing so all right once that's all set up go ahead and render your image out i've already done that so I'm just going to bring this into here okay so right away we want to change our bit depth Let's change this to 32 bits per channel float. And we're going to be working in ASUS CG. And we want to linearize our working space. So make sure you're in ASUS CG, 32 bits. And another thing we need to do is go into interpret footage on our image here and check preserve RGB. OK. And let's pop that in its own comp. We're not going to see anything because this is our passes until we extract our data. And when I rendered this, I had a few more passes checked, but we only need those four I showed you before. Now, it depends on your scene. If you have a bunch of like other things you should have checked, like uh, subsurface scattering, whatnot, you, you will have more of these, but for our purpose, We'll have four. All right. And 
now we just want to grab all these layers and change them to linear dodge and now we get our composite You'll notice the colors are a bit weird since we're in Asus. We actually have this use display color management on, which we'll need to check off. And it'll look strange again, but that's just because we're in Asus. And let's pre-compose these. And I'm going to call this composite. All right, time for the fun stuff. Now, um, in order for After Effects to work with Asus, you will need the Open Color I.O. plugin, along with the configuration files. I'll have links to those in the description. Just make sure you put the Open Color I.O. into your plugins file for After Effects, and you'll be in a good spot. Okay, so I already have Open Color I.O. installed, and then. This is where you load the config files. I have those on my D drive under Asus. Okay. Now, since we used a linear output from Cinema 4D, we're going to want to go to this input space and go to linear sRGB. And on the output space, we will choose Asus CG. And this will be our IDT. If you want to label that, this will be the IDT. Create another adjustment layer. This will be the ODT. And we'll just pick open color IO again. Pick the config. And we're going to go from ACES CG. And we're going to output to just a normal sRGB. You should already see a difference than what we had before. And essentially what this is doing, this is taking our linear image going into ACES CG. We will do all our color correction in ACES CG and then it's outputting ACES CG to an sRGB. Kind of confusing, but it's just how it goes. And then if we want, oops. So I'm going to name this looks. And I'm just going to grab an exposure onto here. We can see how this is going to react. That looks pretty close to our raw image. But yeah, from there, you can uh, apply all the tweaks you like. Um, and we are now coloring in Asus. Um, one thing you can see, uh, the difference between Asus CG and sRGB is if we play with the exposure, we get a nice blowout on the image. Um, the colors don't get all crazy and funky on us. The image is going to blow out and it's not going to have all these weird color shifts and whatnot. So this is a good sign. We can definitely tell that we are working within ACES, judging by how this image is responding. I'm not going to go too big into the color correction on this image, but I just wanted to get you guys working in this workflow. Try it out. See if it works for you. Um, I'm sure there will be a lot more resources coming out about Asus and After Effects, Octane, everything under the sun. But yeah, go ahead and try it out. If you guys um, find anything new, if I messed up anything, let me know. I mean, I'm very new to this whole Asus workflow myself. Um, one thing I found working like this is that I'm able to export a PNG and it'll look just like this. Um, but if I export a TIFF, it'll look like this. It's as if it makes it use the display color or some shit. So um, hopefully you guys got something out of this tutorial. Um, ASUS is a very new subject within the industry, so I'm sure there'll be a lot more information coming out uh, over the next following months. But um, 
yeah, go ahead and give it a try. In our next tutorial, we're going to be going over some tips on how to use localized transform spaces within Octane to get more detail out of your dirt node. And we're going to be looking at this cool, grungy metal texture. So, yeah, stick around for that. That'll be it for this one. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.